All right guys, Colton Woods here, and we have a really unique opportunity. We're here with a two-year-old, not rough at all fella. His name is All Done Roughing It, out of a daughter of Hollywood Done It. And I'm here with my friend Shelby Winstead at her home facility, uh, God Given Ranch for Chevy Cheyenne horsemanship and so we are actually what you guys are gonna get to see today is we're gonna start this two-year-old together um, obviously he with his pedigree he's gonna be on track for the reigning and we've all we've done is turned him in here this morning and just kind of let him stretch his legs uh, Shelby and I just finished up a clinic together this weekend and figured since we don't get to get together too often why don't we get to start a colt together and so that's what we're going to do I'm gonna start off with doing some basic groundwork with this guy in the halter then Shelby's gonna step in and kind of sack him out get him get him used to some other things like a flag desensitize him a little bit and they'll keep progressing get put the first ride hopefully on this guy today and she's had him for several months it sounds like based on what she told me and uh, hasn't done anything with him he's been running outside with some other uh, colts and some older horses and and then coming inside getting fed but <laughs> she brushed him off just a minute ago and she was like i don't know if i've even brushed him since i got him so you know it's nothing against him but just letting him kind of grow up and be a horse and so he's he's got a long career hopefully ahead of him and so we're just going to make sure he gets a strong foundation and get started and from what we've seen this morning he's a pretty sensitive little colt he's real curious and kind of uh, right up in your space but he uh he is pretty sensitive, so I think that we're gonna get to work through some pretty good stuff this morning. So we're gonna go ahead and get started here. And he obviously he already knows how to lead, but I'm gonna start with his basic hind quarters and asking this inside hind foot to step across. And we're just gonna make sure we start, we wanna make sure this horse gets a really good foundation, but we're also, we're not going to, we're here to get this colt started. This is not like a clinic situation necessarily where we're gonna, good boy, where we're going to um, necessarily, there's not, a, I know Shelby and I, we haven't ever started a colt together, but we're both just utilizing our, our own programs and saying, hey, why don't you do this part? I'll do this part. And we're both very confident that our programs are gonna work together pretty good. And so right here, I'm just basically using some body language to say, hey, can you track that inside hind foot up underneath you? There you go, buddy. And that way we can start to utilize, get control of that engine, that back end there. And I'm just gonna set this out of the way. And then we'll, that's doing pretty good. Good job, buddy. I might actually step in here, take a hold of this lead rope a little bit and ask him to see if he can kind of bend a little bit. See, so he kind of braces into that halter. And I'm just kind of rubbing him here. I'm wanting him to move his hind in, but also I'm waiting for him to get soft there. He starts to get soft on the halter rope. So I'm just kind of going with him here. You can see that his inside hind foot is tracking out and back behind him. Cause he's feeling the pressure on that halter rope and he's, he's starting to make it a little bit. And once his feet gets right, his head's gonna get right. There you go, buddy. Just kind of adjust a little bit to help him out. Just rub on him. It's gonna take a bit of a balance deal between, he's, he has a bit of sensitivity to him, so we'll, Go ahead and ask him to move his feet, but then also step back in here. Like I just went to touch him and his back got kind of tight. So we'll step in here and kind of rub him down a little bit. That feels pretty good. The one thing that we have that horses don't have are thumbs. So we can use those to kind of make some friends. So did you find it? Cool. So. So this time I'm kind of asking, I just want him to kind of bend his nose just a little bit more. The last time he was doing pretty good because he's so sensitive that he'll just kind of move his feet around. But eventually we want to start to get that, start to get that nose and say, hey, can you actually bend your neck and start to follow that around? There you go. So we're not looking for perfection by any means. Let's step in here. 
Ask him to back up a little bit. And so here basically we're not gonna harp on any one thing with this little fellow. We're just gonna kinda try to cover a few a few basic things that he might need that he's going to need later on in life. And considering we might see if we can go ahead and start getting some of those shoulders. So I learned this weekend at our clinic together that I've, we, Shelby and I have always both done this similar exercise with our horses, but she called it a direct and drive exercise. And I really liked that because that's, it puts a lot of clarity, particularly when you're teaching other people how to do it. I just kind of said, we're just gonna send our horses out onto a circle and this is how we're gonna do it. But the direct and drive was something I really liked because we get to end up directing these guys. He's gonna look where he's going, so he's looking that way and then I can add some pressure to the shoulder. And then once he goes, I just kind of go with him. This lead rope's not super long, but when he does go, I'm just gonna kind of go with him and then ask, get the hindquarters and reset because they get a little unsure about that sometimes. And I was at home halter breaking a yearling right before the clinic. And, you know, I went to do this and she was rearing up and stuff like that because she's just real stuck. And so here, just kind of like to go with him and then step in and ask for those hindquarters again. But because he's a little uncertain, we just won't want him to go out there and run to the end of the lead rope and then hit it and go, oh gosh, I'm not supposed to be out here. We say build some confidence in those shoulders. Then right here, I'm kind of, when he's going around on the circle, I'm almost applying, I'm trying to apply pressure right where my leg would be or right in behind his elbow a little bit to help drive that shoulder forward, keep him moving away. So obviously he moves a little bit better this way as far as his overall suppleness in his body. So we'll spend a little more time on this side, say, hey, that's pretty good. You're looking that way. That's where your feet are hopefully going to go. And now see how he sucks back just a little bit and drive him forward here. And he's just, he just needs to go forward because that front right shoulder, everything. Yeah, all right, buddy. Try to get him a little bit over here. He keeps trying to venture towards that. Towards the mud. Don't want him to, there you go. Yeah, he's real sensitive, huh? And so like there, he kind of just reared up and he kind of got a little stuck. But you notice like, try not to make a big deal about it because he's already getting worried. And so a lot of times you have horses that, you know, people panic when something happens and it's not quite ideal and it could get a little dangerous. So I ended up kind of right behind him. But if I freak out, I'm gonna give, he's already gonna feed off of that because he's already worried and he's like, oh gosh, well, if you're the one sitting here telling me what to do and you're gonna freak out, I really got a reason to be worried because I'm a prey animal and you don't, you're not too confident about this whole situation. So I hear you sucking back. So I'm like, hey, hindquarters go forward. There you go. And all this stuff is, we're trying to, this weekend as we're during our clinic, we were trying to relate it as everything on the groundwork was there. So now that was a little more forward, but my body position on this side is actually kind of driving him in the, right now it's at the hindquarters, but sometimes it's back at the flank and giving him the complete door to keep going forward. And then there's the shoulders stuck. And then he kind of startled himself because he kicked the dirt against the wall. But then that shoulder, that left, this right shoulder, excuse me, kind of gets, tends to get stuck. 
There you go. And it's not uncommon, you know, like he's kind of had a, having a little bit more trouble on this side and sometimes I don't, even if he was messed with when he was younger, we don't spend as much time on this side with him. So he could be a little less confident and a little more unsure, which just means now we gotta spend a little more time over here. But, all right buddy. So my leading hand, this is a, like we said a minute ago, it's a direct and drive exercise, but also as I lead him out it's with my right hand out in front, as I lead him out in front with my right hand, I'm not pulling on him. I direct him and I give him, I guide him where to go. And if he doesn't go, then I drive him towards that rein. It'd just be like your inside rein and your outside leg. So he just kind of feels like sometimes he can't quite go. To me, he hits into that rope and then everything kind of stops. He doesn't feel like he can quite get soft in that lead rope and still move his feet, which if you look way down the road, would be like riding this horse into a contact. He would have some trouble with that way down the road because when he runs into the contact on this side, he gets real rigid and feels like his feet can't go anywhere. So even there, like, so first they kind of get worried and then they, when they start to get more confident and they start to push and I was just rubbing on him here and he's, he is a stud colt. I didn't quite mention that earlier. Um, he is a little stud colt. And, and so with him, I was sitting there rubbing on him and he, he kept kind of blocking me. See, I was coming over here and he was blocking me a little bit, but it wasn't so much. I felt like it was more, hey, I don't, I, it's not, he wasn't super scared. Like he's not running sideways, but he's just like, hey, no, no, no. And so I just bumped him off there like that. Not to, not to keep him worried or anything, but just to kind of tell him like, hey, I, you gotta let me over here a little bit. And actually now is a good opportunity for me to start working on these shoulders. And so let's start to step in here. There we go. And start to say, hey, I've, I've pushed your hindquarters over. I've, I've started utilizing being able to push your shoulders over a little bit. And now, and doing the direct and drive, I was able to do, get the four quarters, but here maybe I can step in towards this head and say, hey, can you, can you try to make this? There you go, buddy. And start to yield your shoulders. All this stuff that, you know, we went through this in detail this weekend with the clinic participants and trying to help them get their horse. Yeah, you guys probably heard him, he kind of grunted there at his buddy. There's some fillies on this back side of this round pin. There. So when his feet go, I just kind of go with him. It doesn't always end exactly like you want it to, but he made an effort and he did what I'd eventually like him to be able to do pretty consistently. But guys, this is his first day. And so, there you go, hind quarters, front quarters, front quarters, front quarters, no, suck back, front quarters, hind quarters, hind quarters, oh boy. So, you know, all this stuff seems pretty simple with some of these horses. But this is the foundation that's going to serve him as Shelby takes him through. And maybe he ends up making a faturity prospect. He sure bred and built well enough to, to go that way. And um, we want to make sure that this groundwork, you know, this makes him easier to be around. So there, like you see, I picked up on him and he just kind of got rigid. There we go. There, that was more off of my, off of the halter. That time, like he, he moved his feet to put the slack in the rein. And that's something that's pretty big. As I pick up on this rein and say, hey, when your head comes over here, you know, here I want you to move your feet. And if you move your feet in the correct direction, which would be this inside hind over, you can actually put the slack in that rein. And so that would give, essentially, like I want these horses to realize they're in control of what happens and that they're, they can make decisions that make it the best deal for them. And 
that's what we're doing is I'm just kind of setting him up and giving him a question and saying, hey, can you figure this little puzzle out? And so I just raised my left hand to block his shoulder and his eye because he was trying to, there you go, buddy. Good job. So there he's like, you see, he's still not a little sure about me being over here. So I don't make a big fuss about it. I don't make a big fuss about it. So Shelby gave me a pretty small lead rope. I don't know if there's another one over here or not. Hey, there's another mare right over here. He was kind of flirting with a minute ago. So go back to that direct and drive. Direct him, drive him. So those shoulders move away. I want him to move on a nice united circle. He's looking where he's going. This, this side's really pretty. I really like how he's traveling here. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Going quarters. Now we're gonna go right back over and get those shoulders. And he still gets a little stuck on this side. And see, he gets a little panicky. That's okay. Now he sucks back. I'm just kind of adjusting with him. He gets a little unsure on this side, so I just kind of go with him. We're gonna spend some time over here. I'm just gonna, and when he gets out there, I'm not gonna jerk on him really. I'm just if he pulls on that lead rope, I'm just gonna let him find what that pressure is because he's gonna have to learn how to come off of that. So earlier on, I didn't, he knows I didn't just go straight to pulling on him, but here I'm just kind of letting him work at it. So he gets out there and he hits it. And when his feet get right, the slack comes back in. Move the shoulders over, there you go. Move the shoulders over, get the shoulders over. Keep going to the outside, go forward, go forward, go forward, don't rear up. See, he sucks back. When things get unsure, you don't like amp it up because if you amp it up when they're not doing what you want them to do, they're gonna do that wrong thing a little bit harder sometimes. There you go, you can go forward. He's just not too forward on this side sometimes. He's real sensitive, but he's actually not too forward. Just gonna kinda let him work at it here and let him get, sometimes with these horses, we gotta, they either, we have to adjust to help them get more comfortable or they have to go until they get comfortable. And so we've done some things to help prepare him for this. And now he, based on what I've learned, is that he just kind of needs to know, go and get confident out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty, I noticed. Um, yeah, if you wouldn't mind grabbing my brown one, just because it has a 14 foot lead on it. No, because there's an exercise I wanted to do with him, but I don't want to get that close. So that, like, that moment right there, he just finally took like four or five strides, maybe three strides, and he was just nice and a lot more relaxed and the way he moved around there. So, thanks bud. And everything to me shaped up, his body got softer, he was, his gates were less choppy, he wasn't getting rigid, his body started to shape up. And uh, we're gonna switch halters here because a minute ago when I was trying to decide what I was gonna do next, I, I've got this 10 foot lead that it's kinda, kinda got us a little limited on what we can end up doing as far as safety. <laughs> cool. What's that? It's a little funny off that halter. It's, yeah, this, this halter, guys, that we've had, this little pink halter, it's a pretty stiff halter. Um, this is one that I use on all my guys at home. It's probably my favorite halter at home. Shelby just went and grabbed it, and uh, it's a lot softer. This is a really soft halter here, and um, sometimes you need to, that firmness on those halters. Some horses deal better with it, or they could utilize it as a training aid. But this guy's so sensitive, you know, it's not, you don't really need it. He just, so we'll go back to, and we're gonna go right back to that exercise. He had a second there to soak on it. And we're just gonna move around. Going back to the same thing. Forward. So I try to, I try to deal with each body part as it works. So there the hindquarters kind of came in, so I drive those hindquarters out. If the shoulders stall, then I'll put pressure on the shoulders. 
But see, like this is so much better now. He's not rearing up, he's not pulling around. And I don't think the halter had a whole lot to do with it. He hasn't really taken a hold of this halter yet. Um, we mainly did it, for, I did it for mainly the length of the lead rope. But we'll go back the other way. And so even early on with these guys, you know, we, we match him up with this sensitivity. <laughs> I just kind of touched him in the barrel there. Um, match him up and like be, realize where he's at with his sensitivity. But we have to understand this horse is going to have to be able to thrive under pressure. So we won't always, we're not going to tiptoe around and we just meet him where he's at and then progress as much as we can. There, that was much better with those shoulders. And again, when he gets out there, he's just going to feel that halter. But he's not even wanting to take a hold of it now. He's figured out he can keep the slack in it. So I'm going to do one or two more things with him, and then we'll let Shelby step in here and um, go through some desensitizing type stuff to prepare him to be saddled. And good job, buddy. So it's all about the feet for our, what we end up doing with these guys. And so this is just gonna be a bit of a puzzle for him to figure out how he can, how he can move his feet and get soft on this halter rope. And I'm looking for the hindquarters to take the same hindquarter step that inside hind track underneath and the shoulders come around and it would be a turn on the forehand versus a turn, then a turn on the haunches. And so I'm going to keep doing that same side. He's obviously a really bright little fella. So he'll start to figure it out. You can see he starts to look that way, which means he might get a little confused when I go to take him the other direction. There, that was nice. And I like how he stays nice and soft and he leads back up to me. A lot of times horses will stall out in the, in the front quarters. So we'll take him the other way, which is, you know, this way is not his best way. But we don't treat it as such. We just kind of go, hey, we just got to go the other way. Just kind of bear with him there. Let him work through that. Get those hind front quarters come through. Stays pretty soft there. Yeah, it was a lot better, huh? I think he responds better on the halter. Yeah, I think the other one, he just gets a little emotional about it. It's a little too, a little too, a little too abrupt for him. Yeah, you can tell he just, he can really figure out how to get his feet around. And so, if you had one that was real touchy that you thought they were gonna be real touchy about their hind end, obviously you can do some other things to get their hind end ready for that rope coming back there. But um, honestly, a lot of the stuff that you end up, that we end up deciding to do with them today and the decisions we make is just off of having started a fair few colts between the two of us and a little bit of intuition on how these how he's responding to everything so i'll go back to this and i'm just going to kind of pick up see now i'm kind of picking up on him a little bit i'm not using as much body language i'm driving towards that hind quarter but i'm actually letting him run into that halter and he's starting to stay soft so that's going to be key that whereas before when i picked up on him he kind of got a little rigid and threw his head um, got stuck in his feet and we're going to eventually one of us is going to end up on him here in the next little bit and we want to be able to pick up on him and be able to get to those feet so we've got the body language stuff kind of rocking but i would like to be able to also pick up on him a bit and say hey can you work off that physical feel and actually step your feet over and so i'm not pulling on him but I'm just saying, hey, I'm going to take the slack out of this lead rope and walk towards here. And can you find a way to get the slack back in it? And he's doing pretty good at it. You ready? I'm ready. All right. So we're going to switch the mic over to Shelby. And she's going to get after doing some desensitizing stuff in preparation to get him saddled. You're kind of goofy. We didn't know. We didn't realize we went to dinner on the night after the first day I'm 
I don't know about you, Colton, but the first thing that I like to do in one that's sensitive like this is actually give them, instead of taking the flag to them, I take it away from them. And give them something to follow. It makes them feel like they've got a job and like they're actually pushing that flag around. And then once I get their confidence that way, I can start taking the flag towards them. But he doesn't seem to be too worried about this right now, honestly. He might pick it up. And then I might just take it away again. He's kind of a cool combination between being sensitive and not worried. Which can benefit you, but also hurt you in, in a few ways if your timing and your fuel's not good enough on him. He's not going to leave you any room to make a mistake. So I just want to put this flag here kind of up to one eye and see if I can get him to look at it and then I'll take it away. I'm not going to leave it there for him to get worried about. Got my assistant out here. Assistant Simba. And I've got the cat desensitized. <laughs> so I'll take it to him and away. To him. I try to avoid putting that flag directly in front of their face at first because one, it's hard for them to see and you're more likely to get a, a bad reaction out of them if they can't see it and they feel offended by it. So there I actually got him to look at that flag and step towards it and I'm going to take it away and let him kind of soak on that for a second. Will you get this cat? <laughs> and then I'm going to go back and see how he responds to it. Go here, take it away. And I, I like, I mean he's a little bit blocking me on this side but he's also acknowledging the flag and he's not moving away from it. So I'm not going to get too hasty in taking it back to him there. Like, I like that he's stepping to it, he's looking at it, he's kind of thinking about going to it. If he starts to block me too much, I'll just kind of take a hold of the halter really gently here. Come around to the shoulder. There. And then we'll go back to the center. I like to keep moving around the arena. I don't like to stay in one spot. I think it just keeps their mind a little fresher when you can walk away and then come back to it. I'd like to get this left side good first before I go anywhere else. Kind of pushing into it. I'm just going to wait for him to quit moving his feet here. Good. I haven't touched him yet, but I'm getting really close to doing that. Good, take it away. Go in here and let him smell it if he wants to. I just touched him with it, so if he wants to check it out, I'll let him do that. I think it's super important how smooth you are in approaching them with the flag. You know, you can go to them quick with it, but once you get there, you've got to be smooth and easy. Because if I were to go to him too quickly, I could see where this would kind of startle him and give him something to worry about.
So I can kind of build on my approach here. I'm not going to throw this flag over his back yet until I go to the right side. So I'll take it to this left side here and I'll touch him all over with it, but I'm not going to cross the center line across his back or neck. Not until I go to the right side. So he's not seen that flag over there yet. Start working my way back to his hip. Start at the point of the hip, work my way down. Good. Now I'll walk him forward, take the flag away from him. I'm just going to keep this flag here by this, the back of this leg, take it away. You know, this is a spot that he can't see super well, so he's going to be a little defensive. I startled him a little bit there, my timing wasn't the best, and actually I was just talking about crossing that center line and how I wasn't going to, uh, but the wind here is kind of taking my flag over to that right side underneath his belly, and he's not seen it there yet. So he does have a little bit of a reason to be concerned in his mind. You know, I haven't built him up to, to going over there. So I was talking about not crossing the center line over his back, but you can cross it underneath too. We'll go ahead and switch hands here and we can start the process over on this right side. Take it to him. He's acknowledging it. Take it away. Take it to him. He's following it. We're just kind of catching that eye and sparking his curiosity. This is a uh, side he struggles with just a little bit. Even though he's not had a lot of handling, the little bit of handling that he has had has all been on that left side. So he's going to do the same thing over here that he did on the, the left. I'm just going to keep this flag over on that right eye. He's a little bit defensive about you on his right side earlier, wasn't he? Yep. On the halter. Yeah, he kind of didn't didn't quite. Really unsure, and then he kind of got a little blocky about it. Yeah, kind of doesn't doesn't want you over there. I, I, he's you know he's walking away from me, but he's also moving his shoulder away, and he's letting me on this side. So I'm not going to get worried about the fact that he's still moving as much as he's accepting me over here. I kind of have to put my hand up here, you know, next to his eye, just as a bit of a mental block to keep him, keep that shoulder from coming in. So there, I'm just using my hand to, to keep. Yeah. Yeah, you've got him super soft here. I mean, he understands, you know, when I put my hand up and I kind of block him he'll he'll bend through the shoulder and he'll let me over here he kind of doesn't want it but he's like you know I'm gonna keep trying it so I'm gonna try to put a little bit more distance between us I don't want to take this flag too far back to his shoulder I want him to still be able to see it maybe I've gone a little bit too far by stepping back there by that shoulder I'm 
I'm just going to go ahead and let him move around here and keep moving this, this flag around. I'm not going to increase energy. I'm just going to keep it the same until he decides to stop and maybe take a look at it. There we go. So I'm getting to the point where I can almost touch him with it. So when I get there to his body and I'm actually making contact, I'm not going to necessarily hit him with this flag. I want to rub him with it first. He's pretty sensitive to touch. Careful not to get it caught in this all this mane. Right. I just pulled a bunch of mane out. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. Just keep rubbing. He comes around pretty quickly. He does. You know, for as sensitive as he is. He's a little bit broad. Yeah, he is. He gets a little defensive. But yeah. He wants blinding, but he's improving from it. I think if you get yourself a problem, you're kind of startled. Sure. You know, you certainly would end up in a pinch. You probably make your confidence up pretty bad. Definitely. Yeah, this is the kind of horse that you can, you can hurt his confidence super easy. A little bit of a protest there. I'll just keep working my way down. Starting a little further back on this side because I know he's, a, he's just a little more sensitive over here and defensive, so I'll start kind of at his loin area and then work that flag down his hip. You can see he just kind of moved away from it. And we'll go back here, see if he wants to check this out again. Walk him forward. But I want to keep this flag in his right eye. He kind of wanting to block it just a little. There he's looking. Yeah. Much softer. So now I can start taking this flag to him in a way a little quicker. I think rubbing with the flag is just a lot less abrasive than you know, taking it here and taking it away, taking it here and taking it away. So on a horse that's, you know, super sensitive like him, I'd prefer to rub them first, let them get confident about me taking that flag to them and then go to, to taking it away and to them a little quicker. And I'm not gonna cross that center line still until I go back over to that left side. A little bit funny about his feet, but I haven't done much working down the leg. So now I'm going to start taking that flag up higher over his back, maybe letting it fall over the center line. Seems to be handling this pretty well. I 
And then I'll take it away and rub him before I give him something to worry about and react to. Good boy. Good boy. Go back to it. Oh, I can hear it. This horse is coming around pretty quickly. And I think this is a good point to go ahead and bring the saddle pad out and start with that. Yeah, he's he's not had, he hasn't had any, any handling really. So it's you know probably being led back and forth to the mare and then as a weanling going to his paddock. Yeah, and just here he gets led in and out to pasture, so cool. Old yellow. Alright. So the next step is going to be getting this guy saddled and Shelby just walk through the the flag process um, well, as we were switching the mic we were kind of commenting on the flag itself um, that flag is brand new and so the the little white flag is really light so you can't really just throw it up on him and like get him used to um, something kind of landing on him a little more abruptly and so so he's like, all right, let's go ahead and get him, get him ready to be saddled at least. And so we kind of have to go through a little bit and um, just get him used to something kind of flopping on his back because the saddle's got to have some cinches on it. And like with this little guy, we don't want to make a big deal about anything, but we also don't want to like sneak around him either. And so um, for him, you know, just going through, I'm just going to take this lead rope right now. I'm not going to, I'll do it when he's asking to move around too, but initially, We'll just go through and um, get him used to. And I, I don't mind that he's like kind of looking out the door. There's some people rolling up outside and I don't mind that he is because that means I want him paying attention that I want him to know that this is happening. But also like that he's comfortable enough with it right now that he's not just you know, petrified and he's like, oh my gosh, like there's people out there, but you're doing that. No, he's, like, he's pretty cool with it as of right this second. And so just take the slack out of this and toss it on his back, reach up here, rub him a little bit. And uh, you can tell like Shelby did a really good job with that flag. And like this guy's really sensitive. And so you could, you could startle him and end up getting yourself into a bit of a hell of a wreck. Um, with him if you're not too careful and you could really, and in turn really bang this horse's confidence up. But, so we're not, we don't want to sneak around him, but we also know that over the next couple of days as Shelby keeps working with him after this initial deal, that like we were talking about how his hind feet might, could be pretty touchy and he was, you can see with the flag. So we're not gonna, you just chip away at it. We're not gonna make a big deal about it today. Um, but over the next, couple weeks or a couple days excuse me so I'm just asking to move around here move those shoulders over move the shoulders over so like here Shelby hasn't the last few minutes like when I was working with him initially I was asking him to move out and then here Shelby was like really getting him quiet and desensitized to the uh, to the flag and so she wasn't really driving him around whereas now I'm gonna step back in here and say hey can you move around there buddy and as you're going I'm just going to reach out and toss that lead rope across his back and let him wear it and I'm just bumping him there where my leg or where our leg would initially be kind of saying hey can you there you go because that's, that's gonna happen here in a little bit. And so just slowly 
um, start chipping away, you know, this, the, the, this little exercise with driving him around and, uh, and then tossing this lead rope up onto him was something that I would have done at the end of my first, I would have done in the midst of like when I first did the initial groundwork section. But because Shelby and I was like, okay, I'll do the groundwork, initial groundwork, you do the desensitizing, I just opted not to. And um, because we're both trying to tag team this deal and show you guys how we can get this guy started and work together on it. And uh, good job, buddy. And so, you know, a lot of this stuff, we're both, we're both very much on, on the same page. Like when we were switching that mic over, she's like, hey, you might want to actually do something that my flaps over him. <laughs> so that, that knock went across that midline that Shelby was talking about. And when it did, the end of this rope then came in and kind of touched him right here where the girth, where the cinches would end up going. So that was pretty good, you know, that it happened. It startled him a little bit and he's licking and chewing over here. But we do want him to get used to something flapping over his back because those stirrups are gonna come flying and the cinches are gonna come over. And while we always do it as smoothly as we can, we're not foolish to believe that it doesn't always go according to plan. And eventually this guy, you know, uh, might get saddled up by somebody that's not quite as ideal in how they saddle him. And Right now, this is all confidence building and really getting this horse certain about what's happening. But we also want to prepare him for, for how life is and it's not always the perfect setup. You know, there's pressure involved. And so, I'll just step over here, ask him to drive his feet across. There you go. As, as he's moving around, just kind of reach up there. Let him wear it. Take the slack back out. Good job, buddy. There. Reach up and rub him. There. See, he just kind of has a little bit of a hesitation. That's okay. There. Take the slack. There you go. Good job, bud. Good job. Ask him to step that way. So that was so much better. See how he followed that feel? That's one of the first times that I didn't, he moved, he just followed that feel around and I didn't have to drive him. And he stays so soft. So I might just take my hand here. We know he's a little more sensitive on this side. We don't want to startle him too much. So I'm just taking my left hand and raising it up and essentially desensitizing him like Shelby did. She just didn't go straight to touching him necessarily. There. So I said, put a little more emphasis on, hey, follow that. And he's like, hey, I can do that. Then I might just go up here, drape it over his withers, and rub on him. I don't mind that he stops right now. Later on, I'd want him to keep going, but right now, the fact that he stops and he can kind of process that a little bit. And he's like, hmm, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. So. And then I'll start, you know, we don't always have to go right back out in front of him. If I'm standing for him, I want to start there. there but because he stopped there I just kind of pick up where we left off so this all takes a balance of being sensitive and understanding when he needs to move his feet and when and when he can stay soft on this halter rope or when he can so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the physical in there. I kind of clocked him, he was doing pretty good off of that, but I also wanna make sure, say, hey, maybe when we get, on, if you get, get on him and he's kind of lazy, you know, Shelby and I are gonna tag team it so we can make sure that the source gets the best deal as we can with the both of us here. But she might reach back with the end of that rain at some point and drive him around. So there is a little spot and that's okay. Just keep kind of working at it. I'll just take my hand. And he's like, oh, what's that? I'm not so sure about that. And I was like, that's okay. And it's really cool now that he's, see how he's starting to keep that bend in his neck, but like he hit that halter rope and he just, that inside hind foot followed. So I drive him out and say, hey, can you drive out? Go back there. 
There, good job, buddy. So he's just he's just slowly working at it. So I don't want him. To, he's got to find the balance between hey, this doesn't mean you have to necessarily move your feet, but and it's giving him a sequence of events. I'm just letting him figure it out. So step in here. That's good. He stayed soft and moved his feet around. See, sometimes when you get it, when you do go to tap on them, they can get a little emotional. That doesn't mean you don't have to do it. There you go. There's a big exhale. You guys might even actually be able to hear that on the mic. He's kind of just still blocking me over here. That's okay. He's like, I'm not so sure. Pretty good, buddy. So. And the more touchy you think these little fellas can be, the more prep work you can do. Thanks, can I have that back please? Thank you. But um, one of the things we can do is um, just kind of get him ready for those cinches. You know, if you had one that you thought was gonna be real cinchy, you might, you might actually uh, take a belly rope to him and teach him to lead off of the belly rope. But so you don't have to make any more of a deal about it. You know, when a horse gets, if you think a horse is going to be worried about something, you don't necessarily have to prove to them that they have to be worried about it. You just try to say, hey, that's pretty familiar. Oh, buddy. We'll grab this saddle pad, move along with the game here. Alright. So, similar deal to how Shelby was working with the Working with the flag, just not gonna make a big, not gonna make a big deal about this saddle pad being much different than that flag. I'll just keep it folded up and kind of rub him down with it. Why do I keep it folded up? Yeah, for sure. I think it's a little easier to handle sometimes, like whether it's a tarp or a or a pad. Um, if you get it like this, it's just a lot harder to handle and I might be trying to rub him in the flank and I touch him on his front foot and we already know he's a little touchy about his feet. So a lot of times with these pads, um, I'll just kind of keep them folded up and this pad's not like the lightest pad in the world, but um, and even like if you had one that was real kind of dodgy, you might get one of those little light Navajo pads and just an easy to handle something to kind of get to tossing on them. Um, but yeah, I just keep it folded up because it's a little easier to kind of maneuver and I can be more intentional. Like I know where all the pieces and parts are of it. And again, like Shelby was trying to keep that flag on one side of him and I'm trying to do the same thing. I'm trying, I'm not going to cross that midline because there's several things that happen when you get startle him. And if you did startle him on that offside, he can end up coming on top of you. And so I'm really, when I start doing this stuff like that flag is, was pretty light. Like Shelby did a really good job with dealing with that because um, I certainly, it's not my preference on deal, but in that situation, we kind of just worked with what we had. And sometimes that's what you got to do. And so this pad's nice and soft, so it's not going to startle him too much. You, it's fu He's a funny little guy. Like he can be real reactionary, real sensitive about some stuff, but then he's, 
kind of a little bit into mischief sometimes and he's like oh i'm okay with that so i'll just go get into go get into something and so um it was kind of like when the folks rolled up outside you know i was just starting to throw that lead rope over his back and uh i liked that he kind of he didn't really zone me out but he he wasn't he was you could tell he was focused on something else and he wasn't concerned about what i was doing and so now i might just take this pad and start being pretty nonchalant like i said guys we're not going to tiptoe around him but we're gonna prepare him for it and so again like i said don't make a big deal about it my hand goes here's the center of the pad this side's going to end up on the other side i grab that pad right there and just kind of sling it up there like he's worn it a thousand times so the prep work one of the things i tell people with these with horses particularly when you're dealing with the green ones is the less you know the slower you go and then so they're even i didn't throw it up on him too ideal i kind of the corner of that pad caught him right here in the flank and he's like oh geez that was a little more abrupt you know we've thrown saddle pads on horses quite a bit but um you still sometimes do something like that and you want to make sure they're prepared for it as best you can and uh so so that was a little underneath his chin not ideal but i did it knowing being aware of that because i want him to just like i said we were chipping away at this whole deal and that was you know just we're not gonna if, if he's getting tight like that you know we just keep revisiting it until he um until he kind of just wears it and he's when sometimes when he gets touched with it he, goes, he tightens up a little bit and then still gets into mischief and so you know we kind of if to me if they tighten up like that when we're doing the saddle process like as i was lifting that pad right here right at the base of his withers his muscles got a little tight and so i'm just going to keep doing this until i feel like he's that was a little better um until he stays nice and relaxed and because if we go to do that see how you got a little tight there then if we go to do the uh saddle and we cinch him up and he's tight he's more apt to buck around there and then i don't get too worried that they do kind of scoot around um because that's you know we're strapping the hides of dead animals to them and saying wear that around there partner um that doesn't bother me that much for the first day or so but we can kind of prevent them feeling like they have to go to that place in their mind if we watch the fact that they got tight when we put the pad on and then when we put the saddle on they got tight so that time he didn't um, but i also want to make sure that he's truly this weekend we talked about some horses that don't pay attention a lot and then they end up finding themselves in trouble because when we go to do something like saddle them up they're focused on something else and then they look back and they're like oh my god that thing's attached to me and so we want to make sure that he is pretty much fully aware of like what's happening and so let's sit here and i might lean over into his other eye this is where the cinches are going to come Grab him a little bit. Don't make a huge deal about it. I like to take these pads off when I'm going to get my saddle and everything, just because sometimes it'll work out to where you end up walking over there, the horse bends, the thing falls off on the offside, it hits them in the legs, they spook, and then you're right, not necessarily back to square run, but now you created an issue that you could have prevented. And with like this fella, that would be something that we don't need to elongate the process any longer. So this rope is a 14 foot lead. And so I like to kind of free up my hands as much as possible. So I just run that through my belt loop. And so again, you know here we're just kind of treating the green one like an old broke horse and some days you know i'll saddle him up on the other side i just happen to be on this side right now and i think he's doing pretty good so i'm not going to make a big deal about it so 
So I might spin around here so that I keep this lead rope in a good spot. I always keep it in the crux to my elbow. Drop these cinches down. Oh, Shelby's running through there. One of the things I have found that I do like is um, sometimes I will saddle them up the first time on this side where I'm at right now because it, it prevents me having to walk in front of him more than I need to. I didn't do it this time just because I was, ended up on, I was on the other side of him. I'm just gonna work from that spot. I'm not gonna make a big fuss um, about all of that. Try to get some of this mane out of the way. He's got a nice pretty mane on him. And you gotta stay out of trouble, buddy. So, but I will a lot of times saddle them up for the first time on the other side so I can drop, put that saddle on them and then drop my cinches and walk over. Whereas this time I saddled him up on this side, walked around, put my cinches down, walked back around. And it's just a longer process. And sometimes one can get a find on the other side of trouble a little bit to, uh, but he's, you know, again, he seemed fine. So reach down here. Once I pick this cinch up, I'm gonna keep it snug against his belly. I'm not gonna like let it bang around his legs. My hand, my left hand is, hey, my left hand is holding this cinch up as I run my latigo. And so here, like we're pot committed, right? We've got the cinch run through at least once, now twice. And um, at this point I'm trying to, you see I'm moving away from him, which I normally wouldn't do, but I'm not gonna, I don't wanna create more of a fuss than I have to in this particular moment. If he goes to move, I'm just gonna rub on him. And uh, I'm just saddling him up enough that this thing wouldn't roll around, but I'm not gonna get after him for biting on the lead rope at this exact moment. We'll deal with that later. I hope that's not all the way up on the other side. We'll see. I'll try to get it up again. Um, <laughs> we got two holes. So this back cinch, we want to make sure that it's pretty, it's pretty snug because gosh, I would hate to see his hind foot getting there. And you know, if you're going to use a back cinch, you might as well use it guys. But otherwise you're just going to put yourself in a... Um, you and I might have different reasons, so it might be a little different. Yeah, the back cinch to me, um, a lot of these saddles that are made with back cinches are meant to be ridden with back cinches. Otherwise, a lot of times, um, these saddles tend to tip a little bit and this, in, this back side comes up. And so it's gonna help keep it flush against his back. Um, personally, anytime, like all my saddles are made to have back cinches and I always ride in them. Um, doesn't mean once they're broken going that it's a big as big of a deal, but um, but if you're if they're there, they're meant to be used, and make sure you got them snug up against their belly. They're no different than the front cinch, but people tend to treat them that way for whatever reason, and uh, they need to be snug up against their belly. And so here, I'm just going to ask him to move around. I'm not going to flat ditch him. Sometimes, depending on the horse, we might just take the halter off and say, hasta la vista, you know, go sort things out. But with him, I'm just gonna stay with him for a second and uh, get those hindquarters a little bit. I'd like to, I just snugged him up enough that if something did happen that he wasn't gonna get in, the saddle wasn't gonna roll, but it's not super tight. I like to snug him up, you know, maybe three, four times before I get on them. And I used to do that with my broke horses because you don't want to get one super cinchy. And he's a pretty sensitive little fella. So just saying, hey, can you move your feet and kind of relax down and not make too big of a fuss about all this? And then I'll step back in here and get a little more slack out of that. I might actually have to... What's that? Tiny. Yeah, he's not a big fella. So I'm just gonna run this latigo and tie it off because we're out of holes on this on this deal. And I had even taken it up on a hole on the other side when I saddled him. So, all right, buddy. Because we're in here with this round pin, um, 
in the panels and the way they're set up, I'm going to take his halter off of him so that it doesn't get caught on a panel if he were to get really close to those panels. And otherwise, like if it was a solid walled round pin, I might just leave it on him, but we know we can catch him. So we know we can catch him up, so I'm not too worried about that. Whereas something that might be a little more difficult to get caught, you might just dally that lead rope off. And so I'd let him just, he's stretching down, he's going to feel this saddle in all sorts of different ways. Um, and so I'm just, all I'm, I'm just saying, hey, can you just walk around this ground pin here? I'm not going to startle him. And if he has to go through some sticky spots, then we're going to let him go through some sticky spots. So he just trot, and I know you guys can't see that. He just trotted and got a little tight. And so, the main thing here is we're not going to make a big fuss about any of this. He's just, you got to figure how foreign this is. How foreign it is to him. But it's pretty arbitrary. I always joke, you guys, a lot of you YouTube people, Facebook people are all into the natural horsemanship mojo. You know, the only thing natural about the horsemanship stuff is that we're trying to communicate in a way that the horses understand. The rest of this stuff is pretty unnatural. You know, you don't see horses out in the wild um, packing saddles around because their buddy put it on them. So, you know, or they went and went to their own little tax store and decided that they wanted to put one on them, wanted to buy them a nice rig and show their friends. So, I just want him to feel the motion of this. You know, I'm not worried about how well the round pin work is. Hell, he hasn't hardly done any of it. So I'm just saying, hey, can you just go to the right? All I want him to do is go to the right and just keep moving. I don't care if he really walks right now. I just like him to keep going that way. And then we'll go through the trot and eventually the canter. He's licking and chewing here across this long side, kind of letting him stretch his neck down. I know the camera can't pick up this corner. He sniffs some poop in the corner and then he's trotting. So there he is now. You know, he's not super smooth, and he's still a little tight, but he's exhaling. He didn't feel like he had to. Again, guys, I'm not too, gonna get too worried that he came towards me and all that stuff right now. Well, all that stuff, I'll let Shelby fix later. <laughs> As he gets more educated, we're just trying to make this, uh, we're kind of helping his stalls like right back there. So he's also drawn to that fence. No, it's definitely not a round pin. It's a pin. Yeah, so he gets caught in these corners. Shelby, I know you guys probably may not be able to hear Shelby, but she's saying, you know, if you're really aware of what our setup is right here, that there's a couple rounded corners, but there's actually some square corners in here. And so they're going to get driven. They're going to be, when they get into that, you can't, if he gets safe, let's see if he actually ends up in this corner again. Actually, he didn't. That's fine. But he did before. Just rewind like two minutes. I couldn't just drive his from his rear end because I'd jump him out of the pen potentially. And um, so we have to be pretty aware of from past experiences or watching some other people make a few mistakes. That so here he might. He made that turn a little better. He didn't end up right in that corner. Now you can see he's starting to relax a little bit. He's not getting humped up in behind. Kind of let him cruise.
So, and again, guys, I'm pretty aware that where he's at right now is a little slick. So I like that time I didn't let him just cut back into the fence. One, because I didn't want him to just turn away, but also two, that was, a, he got to feel that saddle in a whole different way. When he made that cut back into the fence, he got, he got a little more round in his back, and then he had the pressure from me pushing him back that way. That saddle feels completely different to him in those moments. And so, there we go. So there's a little extra pressure where he's got to kind of sort some things out. And, and I really want to make sure, because the way that it looks like it's going, that Shelby's going to end up being the one on him, I want to make sure that he's felt this saddle completely as to the best of our ability in a walk trot canter situation that he's turned and really felt it, how it takes a hold of him so that we don't end up in a situation where she's on him and then, uh, then we end up in a bit of a bind. So we're getting pretty close to like kind of moving along here. And that's why he, he's walked around a fair bit. Like I'm like, all right, you're fine. Let's go ahead and trot. Let's see, I'm gonna let him get past this slick spot over here. He's got a nice little more forward trot. So then I'm gonna ask him to canter. You guys probably won't be able to see it on the camera. But I won't do it right down the corner. Nice walk to canter transition out of the gate. He'll need that later in a rollback. Guys, you got it. Like I like to think about all the stuff down the road because it starts here. So I'm gonna we're gonna I'm gonna wrap up here, but I just don't want him to end, finish up in that corner over there. So he's on the opposite end. If I can get him just to kind of hang out over there, I'm not gonna, at this point, I personally don't get too hung up on like getting him hooked on or whatever. Um, I find with my guys, like, I think it's important because that's how you can get them caught in a the field. So they have to have some basic understanding that when you apply pressure and they look at you, you can take it off. Um, I'm sure you guys can't see him, but, he, I, as he looked at me, I backed off because when he gets turned out, if he was getting hard to catch, you can't catch hard to catch horses. You got to get them ready to be caught. So I'll work with him just a little bit here, but I also find Shelby's going to keep working with this guy, rubbing on him, saddling him, riding him. All of a sudden, the horse is just going to get more and more and more confident in things, and he's going to get some different life experiences. And then I find just over a period of time that your round pin work kind of shapes up. And that's just basically because at home, the round pin work for us in the groundwork is stuff that gets our horses ready to be rode. And so a lot of our clients don't necessarily, they're not gonna go home and go, I just want my horse to be really good at round pinning. No, they wanna ride their horses. But also you have to have the round pin work to be able to fix issues that rise later on down the road. And so I don't, I don't mind getting it. I don't, want, I don't care that my round pin work is not perfect right out of the gate because I know over time it's just going to sh keep shaping up as I keep working with my horse and explaining certain things. And so, I'm kind of just taking a hold of him here because I want to make sure that he's going to stay soft and be responsive and I'll check our cinch here. And then I'm going to hand him over to Shelby. We'll probably both end up being in here for this. Um, next part, just to help each other out uh, where need be. He's snug, he could probably use a little bit more, but we'll just give him a breather here, rub on him, and uh, keep this ship rolling. So he's doing pretty good. Let's just send him out one more time. I'd like to turn him into the fence uh, a few times because yeah. I just know when I get on him, and then you go, you know, usually yeah. there's so much going on. But... Yeah. I'll just, you want me to keep this mic on? Do you want me to hand it to you? Sure. Shelby's going to step in there with him and uh, we, we mess with the cinches there for a minute and so she just kind of wants to 
kind of push him out a little bit more and um, actually she's going to push him into the fence a little bit and uh, let him make sure he refills that those girths and that saddle again. Yeah, it's rolling. Oh, there. 
Oh, his hair. Yeah, it's. I tried to keep it out when I saddled him up, but it just, you know, it finds its way back underneath. So. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't do your yoga stretches this morning on the right. I know where you can get a pair. Walmart. Walmart. <laughs> I had every kind of jean in there, but they didn't have. They had like all these regular fit. They didn't have any cowboy cut Wrangler jeans. I was pretty upset. I guess there's just not too many need for that and middle of Indiana. Kind of feel off balance. <laughs> He's like, uh, hey, buddy, can you pay attention? Tractor. So right there was a pretty important moment. There's a tractor on the outside of the barn that just kind of started. I'm talking on the mic. Oh. I'm not talking to you. Since it's rolling and you're not mic'd up, I'll just kind of catch up what you're doing there. But there's a tractor that was coming around the outside of the barn, and you can tell he looked like a pretty happy little fellow, but. Shelby kind of realized that his attention wasn't quite completely on the fact that she was stepping on and off or step, had stepped on him and not that he would get super startled when she got his attention back but you know focus is really important at the even at this stage and and will be you know as he progresses throughout his career and so you know we want to make sure we're maintaining it because again like I, I had said when we were sat on him sometimes I get a little distracted you get you do something and they tune back in and they're like oh my gosh and then they get a little worried so you don't make a big fuss about it, but you certainly want to make sure that you're checking in with them and they're checking in with you and that you're really right there together on the whole thing. So and you know, a lot of folks even once they get going, we just step up on the left and get off on the left, but um and for whatever reason that's the way we've opted to do it, but when we get them started, we we step on and off both sides, keeping those horses mentally mentally balanced. And even for this guy, you know, helping him physically figure out how to get his feet set to where he can stand still when you get on him. They've got to learn how to feel that saddle and how to feel that um, all 80 pounds of Shelby that is trying to step up on him from the other side. She just cut her eyes at me, but <laughs> but when you're stepping up, they've got to be able to learn how to get their feet set and um, so that they can bear, be ready for that. And so here Shelby's just waiting on him. You notice like she's not tugging on him, but she's just, she asked him to bend laterally and he has just kind of got a little bit of a sticky spot and hung up. And so she's just waiting on him to find the way that he can put the softness back in that rein. And right now he feels like he's got to move his feet, which isn't necessarily wrong that's what we were kind of working on earlier but also earlier we were working on the fact that when you move your feet to put softness in the rain you're also staying soft in the lead rope but that's just a little bit of fun part of working with young stud colt series he's like ha, he's he's participating and right there when she released was he finally was focused he got soft um, they realize what's happening like he got soft but he wasn't yeah you know? he got soft but did he really do it because that's what he was thinking about or did he just do it because that's where he kind of decided to put his head 
Um, sometimes you got to reward them when they stumble across it because they just don't know. But in the midst of that, you know, he was kind of playing with the lead and I don't really want to make sure we've got his attention. That was a lot nicer, even though he's still moving his feet a little bit, but he started to follow that feel. So Shelby's just kind of bumping him because he's, he's like, hey, when I get down here, there's some toys to play with. And it's just like, hey, that's not what we're focused on right now. Shelby just mentioned that once she, once she steps on him and is getting ready to ride off that, you know, it's going to be, it's a little different perspective for him. He hasn't had anybody on him as they're moving around and so he, he's not necessarily going to be wanting to look for chew toys and that she needs to know that he has a bit of a true understanding of when she picks up on that rein that he's going to actually get soft and he's going to be focused on it. and. And it starts right here. You see horses and that just people got to step on them and they're half gone across the arena when you step on. You know, for us starting a lot of colts, it starts right here. These horses learn how to stand still on the lead rope. They learn how to stand still when you step up on them for the first time. And that, then they don't, you don't ride past that. Then that's, that's the requirement for the rest of their life. And they understand that like, this is, this is how we go. And, yeah, I mean, I can keep talking. <laughs> sure, and yeah, and if there's something you just want to add in that you're feeling when you're up there, <laughs> you can just talk, and I'll, I'll just kind of reiterate. Yeah, so I just, I like to keep some kind of rhythm when I go through, you know, down here, we're always working, we're hand over hand. Yep. And the biggest mistake that people make and where they run into trouble is when they kind of throw a leg over, they sit real quiet. Yeah, so Shelby's making a really good point, and you guys will take note now as I, as Shelby made, made light of it herself, and then I try to reiterate what she's saying is that when she gets up there, you can see how busy she stays, and in a positive way, she's rubbing on him, she's shifting her seat, she's moving her leg around a little bit. You know, she's not asking that horse to move off, but she's she's making sure that horse knows where she's at all the time, and that she's staying active, which is going to help keep that horse engaged in what's happening on the ground. We've been pretty active. Where our body position and language is changing, we're changing the distance and the length and the lead ropes, and so. She'll be staying pretty active with this little fella as as she gets up there. She's rubbing on him, or Larry, you know, she kind of took the slack out of the lead to help him see if he could stay there. But she's keeping her hands on him. She's not staying still. Her legs are moving. She's rubbing his rump in, and all these things to help make sure that horse is. Because what ends, a lot of times we end up finding is that people step up on their horses, and then they get like Shelby had just said, they get really, really quiet, and then. Sometimes, unfortunately, the first thing they ask that horse to do before they actually rub on him and everything is they ask the thing to move off. And then now the horse starts to feel like, oh my gosh, I got a monster on my back because you kind of just snuck up there a little bit. And then by the time they really realize what's going on, they haven't got super comfortable with you actually being up there. And then it kind of turns into a what could be a viral Facebook video because it's, the horse wasn't quite prepared for it. So, uh, what's your thoughts now, Shelby? Huh? What's your thoughts now? Uh, you know, after I do some of this and they stand still, you know, he, he, he gets bored quickly. I like to send them back out. Okay. And then go back to it and then actually ride. You bet. So, Shelby was just saying, uh, you know, we've already moved this colt out a little bit, but um, we've done some slower work and so he's just kind of been we haven't asked him to really move out we've actually asked him to stay still learn to stand but when he's getting when we're stepping up onto him and because of that the next step is for shelby to actually step up and ask him to move out so we want to get his feet moving again and 
because you'd be surprised you know, sometimes those colts get comfortable and then they have to go move out again and they're like oh gosh that thing's still there you know it feels a little different he's never worn it before so she's just going to get his get his feet engaged again and then once she feels like he's moving out like Shelby, I mean, I'm pretty happy with how he's moving so far. I am too. You know, I mean, he's got a nice cadence in his trot. And a lot of times on my end, when I see the cadence, um, it's really important because it's, it's a sign of how relaxed they are. And it's a sign of, um, you know, where their mind's at. And so if they're not super relaxed, a lot of times that that cadence gets real choppy and so there in the corner i don't know if you guys can see it he stopped in the corner licked and chewed and was hanging out for a second and shelby went to walk off a little bit and he he thought about falling but he just quite didn't quite make it and shelby went back and kind of got in front of his eye a little bit and got him re-engaged and now he's slowly starting to make his way and join her up we essentially do the join up with her and you can tell this little colt, you know, when we first started this morning, he was pretty spry. He was bucking, kicking, and running around and having a good time. And now he's actually starting to think about some work and what we're getting ready to do here. So, all right. So I'm going to step in here with Shelby. And um, we're just going to work together here to help this colt get a good understanding and build some confidence in what's being asked of him as far as how to move his feet, staying soft in the halter rope, build some confidence moving through his gates. All right. Move him off. You want me to move him off? That's fine. He's right over the stick and string. So I'll just use my hands to start with and then once he moves off I'll reach up. I'm just gonna sit here kinda neutrally. Okay. Just You're just gonna ride gonna sit on him. Yep. Alright, so what we're gonna end up doing here is I'm gonna be the driving force for this guy and Shelby's just up there building confidence in the fact that somebody's on him. You know, this is something I know we I don't get to do very often. Because because well, honestly, you know, I think Shelby's in the same boat. We both start colts by ourselves a lot. And so a lot of times when we get on them, um, when we get on them for the first time, we're actually having to drive them around. We're having to dictate, even if we're not really steering them, we're having to get them moving forward. And we're a bit of, we're putting pressure on them from up there. Whereas this time, like Shelby gets to be good cop essentially she gets to sit up there and rub on him and make him feel really good i'm just here to kind of say hey we're not asking you to do anything any different than what you've already done as far as moving around this round pin and so just to start with i'd like you know and shelby's going to hopefully speak up if she wants something a little different but i'm just going to let him walk around here and let him kind of build some confidence because we horses need to learn how to deal with with emotion and speed can be emotion the faster they go the faster their brain goes the more worried they can get and you know later on in this life you know he's bred to go rain shelby hopefully you know will end up seeing him in a couple of years where he's really hauling down the end of the arena and then that speed is that confidence and be able to just dig some dirt up and do a nice sliding stop but he's got to be able to handle that speed and be able to build off that emotion and build some confidence in it so here you know we just want him to get real comfortable the fact that he's just dropping his head and relaxing a little bit and shelby's able to just to kind of focus on rubbing him and let him take in the sights and still stay focused you can tell like if he does stall, i'm just barely walking towards him a little bit and he still moves off so you want to go the other direction? Yeah. So I'll step out here in front of him. Shelby's not going to steer him or anything. There he faces up a little bit. I'm going to point back the other direction. That was pretty handy. Cool. I didn't have to really put in any driving pressure, but he started to follow just that feel out to that side. So. <laughs> He's kind of rubbing her legs into the fence there. That's why we all will need re knee replacements by the time we're 45. Of these panels. A 
And we try to keep note of like little things. Like this is the side that he had a little, like we're not worried about it. Like I didn't even really, we just try to take note that when we got started, he wasn't as comfortable with us on this side of his body. And so I'm even more thrilled that he's, he, he seems very balanced. That was kind of not nice, but he. <laughs> I'm gonna get stuck. <laughs> get stuck. Yeah, you want to go ahead and trot? Yeah, let's, 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 let's go ahead and move him out. Yeah. Yeah. He's got potential. Yeah. <laughs> so there we just asked him to trot, and that was the first time he kind of had somebody in behind him, and he's like, "Oh, geez." Yeah. In that instance, the worst thing you can do is take a hold of him, even though that's what your instinct is telling you to do. Grab, hang on. So I'm trying to do just a little bit because he's, you know, he gets a little bit of a look in his eye. He's unsure. Yeah, okay. Let's just try to, we'll just go switch direction. He's got some space to make his turn here, right there in front of him. He's a little more comfortable staying inside of this side anyway. Yep. And then maybe if we build a confidence trotting on this side. Yeah, for sure. All right, buddy. There we go, a little bit better. So Shelby was just making a comment when he scooted there the last time. Um, the worst thing you can do is he kind of grabbed his butt and the worst thing that Shelby could do is do the same. And because then it's just gonna turn into a bit of a contest of scooting around. So she stayed super relaxed when he went forward and got a little worried, her hand stayed forward. She never like grabbed him in the face. You know, didn't grab him with her legs. Uh, now she's actually can reach back and rub him on the rear end. Cool. So I'm not sure what the camera's picking up, but he kind of just came around that turn and then offered to face up and check back in, which is pretty, we'll take it when we get it. And just give him a second just to lick and chew here. And then we'll, you want to go the, go back the other direction? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Kind of on that either. Yeah. Yep. Because anyway, he scooted forward and then anytime I was driving him forward, he kept trying to look back towards the fence and put, put us back in that other eye. Yeah. <laughs> Channel the energy. There, that's better. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shelby saw his head going down. Hey, she, we've watched him a couple of times. Might have a cow horse in training. <laughs> There we go. So I'm gonna be, we don't, there's, there's gonna be a balancing act here with him of not startling him, but also being assertive enough to keep the energy going. Because he gets, if he gets too slow, he gets stuck and he wants to roll back into the fence. And Shelby made a pretty good sound there when he dropped his head into the fence and thought about rolling back because we've watched him do it once or twice and he's pretty quick on his feet when he does it. <laughs> so we know that yeah, there, he gets kind of light on his toes. So we'll just kind of let him walk for a second here. Let him hang out for a second. So, and so even like Shelby's up there rubbing on him and I'm sitting here driving him around but I still want to be able to like rub on him a little bit and I don't want him to start get super worried that um, I'm out chasing him around. All right. All right. So there, he did that before. He did that before and that's when we opted to go ahead and start channeling. We want to give him a second to kind of digest what we're doing and to soak on it. But then also when he's like, all right, I'm getting kind of bored here because he's not super like busy minded, but he's, he needs to be stimulated. Yeah. And so when they say, hey, 
come on buddy let's move on just take that energy and use it it's not a bad thing you know just meet him that's like what is that's his i heard like wade black talking about it rode of the horse and he's just talking like that that's his soul that's who he is so don't fight with him don't try to crush it just use it go out and do something with it all right you ready to lope around so we'll go through the trot and then go up to the low once we get him forward. So I want to see him just relax a little bit. There, that head kind of came up as he moved up. We'll get him past this corner here. Good. I don't, I don't want you to have to lope through that too much. Yeah, sure. <laughs> So guys, that slick spot over there, we're not trying to lope him through there too much just because that could go sideways, literally. All right, we'll just give him a second here. Cool. Yep, I like that and it works out a little bit because he's getting a rest in the opposite corner from the, he's away from the gate. His stall is right here. So he's getting to rest on the opposite side of this pen away from all of that, which will be super handy because like Shelby's arena is just in behind here and we don't want him running to the way we're already working on some stuff like not letting him get too sucked to the gate and all that stuff he's learning to rest away from all that stuff and it won't be a foreign concept if Shelby pitches the reins to him in the arena and he runs back to the gate and she kind of gets after him a little bit and then he turns around and goes the other way and he learns to rest he's like oh okay this is the, the same similar deal um, and he'll have a better chance at it so all right, he hasn't quite got busy minded yet, but we'll go ahead and um, direct him this other way. Hey Paul, I might have you wait just maybe like 10, 15 minutes here and then I can move horses for you. So you're not cleaning with those babies in there. So. Good deal. So even here, you know, we like that he's so relaxed, but I personally, I want him to have a good walk. Purposeful. Yeah, like he's actually going somewhere. And so sometimes he gets a little sluggish and I'll just, I'm not asking him to necessarily trot off. But I'm like, hey, can you get a, you, can you just kind of move out a little bit? And, all right, you ready to trot? Yeah. All right, somebody. So I am using a little bit of inside range. Yeah, she's, what Shelby's saying, she is, she, even the last go around, she started to pick up a little bit on that inside rein to, um, to help guide him. He was kind of, he was really stuck to the fence a little bit and she was starting to bang her legs and stirrups in there, but also to kind of help him realize that he can't just keep turning into the fence. So you guys can even see, like I kissed him and I hadn't really done that, been clucking to him and that kiss was a little extra pressure for him. So here, I'm not gonna try to push him to lope just yet for Shelby, because that, that was an effort in the right direction. He extended trot and then he, he was really close to the lope, but that speeds of motion. There. So that one, not pushing him the last time. <laughs> you better stay between those ears. So he got a little stuck over there, but again, just kind of work with him through it. Shelby kind of started picking up on the inside rein, trying to keep him looking that direction. I was applying pressure to the outside eye, trying to keep driving him forward. Um, I guess my thought process on that first time, we weren't really too concerned about getting him loping because he sometimes some of these horses, 
even in a pen like this, he's not a huge, really big horse, but he might, sometimes they get to feeling like they don't have anywhere to go. And so they get a little stuck. But he, he was making effort in the right direction because he went from like a slow trot, and then he started getting a bit of a medium trot, and then he ended up that extended trot. So he just build on that direction and his mind going in that way, and then he can start to, and then eventually we'll get the lope without having to kick on him and all that kind of stuff. You want to push that one out a little bit? Yeah. Can. I mean, we don't want them on the concrete, but it Yeah. You know, follow the circle a little bit. Sure. All right. <laughs> What's that? Trying to hold that in. Trying to hold it. <laughs> 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 trying not to. Trying to. Somebody's not trying not to sneeze in case she grabs a hold of him. <laughs> But you can tell him, like this little guy, you know, just a second, as I was coming back from moving that panel, he started to paw a little bit and then he looked up and realized like I was coming back this direction. And um, he does have, yeah. So Shelby's just gonna step off and step back on, which is probably not a bad idea because he's got his right rein or left rein through his mouth. <laughs> Getting him ready for the bit, I reckon. But, you know, it's good to stay active with these guys and kind of keep it, things moving and a little bit different. Um, and so he's kind of, he's been stimulated this whole time and he's like, probably came out of a stall thinking he was getting turned outside and, and we're like, hey, Shelby grabbed him out of the stall and she's, she's kind of talking to him. She's like, welcome to the first day of the rest of your life. And um, so while he'll still obviously get plenty of turnout, he'll, uh, he'll be, this will be a new, new part of his routine here. <laughs> Shelby's got to do her yoga a little bit more in the mornings there. Not the most flexible individual. And so just getting off of them, you know, is, or even loosening the cinch and getting off your horse or unsaddling them and then saddling them back up is all good ways to, uh, to give them a, just a bit of a break and reset and then go back to it. So what you reckon? I'm not sure. You're not sure? <laughs> We're gonna, uh, need to do something, but I can go to take a hold of him a little more if he can keep forward movement. Yeah. I don't want to do too much more because I think we're, we're accomplished a lot. Yeah, we've got a lot done. That's what I'm thinking. And, you know, I don't. I mean, I was kind of starting to take hold of him just a little bit. You know, just 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 a little bit of feel, and he's following it. Yep. But uh, let's. I mean, even if we just go one lap and you kind of maybe step in front of him, let me turn him into you, draw back. You want to turn him back in towards me? Yeah, it's not into the fence. I want to actually like. Yep. That work. And we All can right. go. Um, we go to left, go to the left first. To the left. Yep. Go to the left. Turn to the left. Yep. End up on the right side. Yep. We don't need to do too much. Maybe once both ways. Yeah. If no. It's if it's quality, quality, we'll just get out while it's good. So. <laughs> yeah. For you liberty people, there you go. <laughs> right. That's how you do this. Right. Just start them under saddle, you'll get a liberty horse. <laughs> but so here what we're gonna work on is a forward motion for one. <laughs> and then Shelby's actually gonna pick up on this inside rein when she tells me, and I'm gonna end up stepping in front of him and so that she can start to actually get a bit of a physical feel. On the, and as she goes ahead and takes a hold of him, I'm gonna step back and then drive this outside shoulder back to the fence. Perfect. And then she'll use that inside rein there to help guide him. So I just got a little more assertive there so that he can keep tracking around. As, as we get work with this cold a little bit more, I know that I get a little more confident in, and exactly how much pressure we can put on him and what, how he's gonna handle it without getting Shelby in a sticky spot. So as we come down this fence, I'm gonna step back in front. She'll pick up on that inside rein. I'm gonna put pressure on this outside eye and let him go across. So this is an awesome way, like I don't get the liberty of doing this at home because I don't have people to help me, but like, 
Shelby doesn't have to you worry about using her legs too much. She could start to actually introduce them and might just put it on, but it's not gonna have to be a, literally the driving force in behind it. You wanna go one more time this way? Yeah, here I'll step out in front. She'll pick the inside rein. I'll put pressure on this outside eye and ask those shoulders to step across. Quit, you know, when he wants to turn with you and yeah. you can't draw him in. You want You don't want to make a big fuss about that. I just kind of start. Shelby kind of gave me a look because I started laying that rope against his rear right in there. But this is good. that was my fault. So Shelby and I had a little miscommunication there. I was going to drive him the other way, and it worked out though. Yeah, it worked out fine. He got to do a little bit of a circle. That's pretty good first day on the job there, buddy. Pretty uneventful, that's the way I like it. Yeah. It's nice when it's a little boring. <laughs> yeah, that's right. If anybody made it to this part of the video, props to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure plenty of people Went ahead and hit skip because it was getting pretty boring, at least to the average Joe. Cool. Well, we're going to get him untacked here and you know, he'll go back and get to think on that for the next little while and we'll see where he ends up here in the next 6, 8, 12, 24 months. Yep. This will be fun to have all this on footage.